So I knew I wound up doing this job after moving the machine to the new shop and uh, I did a quick test cut this morning and uh, sure enough we do have to align the headstock. We won't need micrometers for the first uh, test cut, all we need is these educator C-clamps here and we can check up here we have uh, 1.139. Down at this end we are 1.147. So I think many of these Asian lathes uh, work uh, much the same way. They don't have defined V-ways in the headstock to align it. Uh, it sits on essentially a flat surface clamped down by two Allen bolts on this end and two more in behind the change gears. Adjustment is done by these two bolts in the rear that I have loosened off already and I'm going to pull the headstock towards the uh, front of the lathe again and then start over test cuts and measurements. Getting the headstock pulled toward the front is not too hard. If you look in behind this idler gear you'll see a channel that follows all the way through the machine on the front. So we can get a screwdriver in there and we can pry a little bit to get the head to move towards the front of the lathe. Works the same way on this end. We'll get a screwdriver in here and pull the head back. Then we'll bolt it down, take another test cut, and then we'll use the adjuster bolts on the back to uh, correct any misalignments. Okay, so at this point now we got our head pulled as far back toward the front as we can. Uh, our bolts are snug down, uh, not loose but not uh, overly tight because we need to adjust this thing and we're going to do a really light cut and uh, measure our, our rod again. So this is our first test cut after the first alignment. We'll go over this again and see what we have. We'll still use the C-clamps for now. 1132 1135 So we're still three thousandths fat on this end. back to our farthest away adjusting bolt and we'll tension it just a little bit. Okay, another test cut. here and less as it worked its way up so we should be a lot closer to our, uh, our target numbers. A very light cut again of uh, one or two thousandths. So we're just using the high speed steel tool we have uh, quite aggressive rake angle and a generous radius hone that a diamond stone and uh, try to get a good surface finish. We'll go once more with the C-clamps before we uh, break out the micrometers. One thirty one. Almost one thirty three. So now we'll get out a little more precise tool and try it. Well, that's 
33 and change. 33 and a half. Yeah, we're six tenths actually. Thirty one thirty three. Yeah, I gotta call it six. One three three six. One three four three. So we're not off much. Seven tenths. So let's try just a little more on that screw. So we put a little tension on that screw and we barely move. So at this point we'll tighten down our bolts more. Now one roughing cut to bring everything back to an even tool pressure and then a final cut. So I'd originally planned to show how much we were going to adjust the head by using a good oil indicator. But I do a small adjustment and stick on our C-clamps again for a quick measurement and the uh, thing looks really, really close. So we break out a more precise tool and we do a measurement here. So here I get one, where am I? 1.1225 So we come back to this end Here we are 1 2 2 8 uh, three tenths sounds good. So we'll double check again. One, two, two. Yeah, I gotta call that five. We get seven this time, so so one, two, two, seven. I can live with that, I think. We're gonna cinch down our bolts, do one last test cut, remeasure, and we'll probably let her fly like that. Okay, so we have some big torque on our head mounting bolts. We'll set this thing up, do one last test cut and a measure, and uh, we're probably gonna let her go. So our super light cut is done, no chatter. We'll do a fun final measurement on this. We'll 
call that 1.120. And a half that. So one, two, or five on the far end. And one point one two oh. What do I tell you? I got to go with five on that as well. One, two, oh, six this time. And six again. So one, two, oh, six. Oh, my coffee is ready. One, two, oh, five. Make sure these things are clean. Three readings of one two oh five. I think I'm gonna let that go. Well, I tried my best to uh, show an indicator on it, but every time I seem to align something on camera, it just goes right in place for some reason. I take it in this case is the head is taking a set to the bed of the lathe, and of course, if you give it a little wiggle, it moves back where it should go. Uh, like I said, we have this turning pretty good. Just put in a couple of tenths on five inches. Uh, I can live with that, I think, and we'll uh, we'll start some turning, I guess, with it very soon. So we're just taking the finishing cut on our uh, lathe setup, and we get a phone call, and uh, it's a poor gentleman from the from uh, Middle Canada who's down on a camping trip and uh, had an unfortunate run in with a concrete post underneath his camper. And uh, you can see the post was roughly six inches diameter by the impression left in the sheet metal. Problem was, <coughs> there were three propane lines that he took out when he uh, ran into the post. So we wound up having to remove some sheet metal from his uh, from his RV and uh, replace a whole bunch of propane lines and get them back operational. Poor guy had spent uh, three days in four degree weather with no heat in his camper. So we got him fixed up and made him a happy camper, no pun intended. Or maybe that was pun intended. We'll see.